and well met everybody. Welcome to Geek Thyself, a show by nerds, for nerds, who love geeking out over random facts and esoteric trivia. My name is Heather. I'm Russell. And we'll be your hosts for this journey through the wondrous land of information. Hi everyone, and welcome back to this week's episode of Geek Thyself. Woo! We, we, we did two in a row. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We actually, we got two in a row out with both of us. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm a Hopefully that's, that's okay. No, we're both dogs. So, you know. <laughs> true. This isn't, this isn't news. No, that's true. I mean, the it, title of the show is Geek Thyself. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is... This is, they should know by now. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the title and I suppose the general topic about geeky stuff, looking at our list for this episode, uh, as we talked about last week, we talked about predictions, that movies made that are now in the past. Mm-hmm. And while this isn't identical, what we are doing is we are looking back at the last decade and basically giving it a little bit of review. <laughs> Yep. So, so we compiled a little bit of a list of the things that have come out in the last decade mm-hmm. that mean a lot to us. Or, or that we just want to talk about. <laughs> or that we just want to talk about, which most of these are anyway. Because basically we're just reviewing the last decade, uh, which is a bit of a weird concept for me because this is probably the sort of the first decade that I've really been alive. <laughs> is that... No, 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 I don't mean that in a funny way. I mean that as in, at the end of 2010, I was just finishing high school. Ah, uh, adult. Yes. It's your, your, your first decade as an adult. Yeah, where I actually remember a lot of the things, because the early 2000s, I don't remember much of, and I remember being in school at the mm-hmm. late 2000s, but I don't really remember too much about the world around me. I, right. This is well, really the kind... On school. Yeah, yeah, I also worked at that point, so uh, I've worked since I was thirteen. Uh, but you know, it's it's this is like the first conscious decade that I've had mm-hmm. in, in that kind of regard, like of me being a person and who I am, discovering what I like, which yeah. a lot of the things on this list kind of help me figure that person out, especially the very top one, the very very top one. Yeah, I. I will agree. So um, the first, we have a list in front of us that we're staring at that we put together together. Mm. Wow. Okay. Um, Yeah. That we jointly put together. That's a better way to phrase what I just said. Mm. So, Mm -hmm. uh, and the first thing is Dungeons and Dragons, specifically fifth edition. Yes. Uh, Fifth edition came out in 2014, which is bananas. (laughs) Uh, I when I was thinking about it, it's like it, uh, I originally said it was like 2011, 2012, just because that's when I thought it had to have been. Because it feels like we've been playing it forever. Um, mm-hmm. Now, in in terms of Dungeons and Dragons, I personally have been playing since two thousand three. Yes, I we... I'm gonna date myself right now. But I <laughs> I started um, three point five edition, and I started mm-hmm. my freshman year of high of college. Um. One of my dorm mates was going through withdrawal from not getting to play with his normal group, Uh-oh. and we were in the nerd dorm. It was all a bunch of nerd, nerdy, like studious kids who were also into like sci-fi fantasy stuff. So nice. basically, he got a group of us together and we started playing. And I've been playing ever since. Yeah, ironically, I we don't call it freshman year, but uh, in my first year of college or university mm-hmm. is when I first started playing D and D as well. Ironically. Uh, large gap though in the terms of oh, when yeah, like the year yeah. that I started versus his <laughs> hey, year. <laughs> hey, you're the one doing this to yourself now. Uh I first I played D and D in twenty fifteen. Which feels like a lot longer than twenty fifteen, I'm gonna be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh but that's when I first got my first experience with D and D when I joined the same university that one of my friends did. Uh they, they, they were ahead of me because um because my English was terrible at that point. Uh I had uh some learning difficulties, uh, along with dyslexia and dyspraxia and all that good stuff. So it meant my English wasn't up to par. So I spent an extra year getting it up to par. 
which was tough, but I did it. Um, and that's why I was uh, a year or so behind. Uh, but by that time, I joined them and they invited me into their group. I, well, I say invited, I was pulled in. It wasn't... <laughs> Uh, I didn't feel like I had a choice, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. It was a lot of fun. That's when I first played my first paladin and my first sorcerer. Uh, and it was a lot of fun to enjoy. Uh, that group still gets together in some form or another occasionally, but not as much now that we're all working and not as close. Yeah. Which is a shame. But I have found many of the groups since then. The biggest one would have been the Tolus group which was actually the second group that I played in. The, space, yes. the, the second group. And the reason that's important is because we've talked about Tolus before. Tolus is the game that I met Heather and Logan and Angela and Andy and mm -hmm. Kyle and Mike and uh, Gabby and Kit and Jenny and so many other people. Yeah. Uh, I think I mentioned Tessa, but if not Tessa as well. <laughs> Tessa's the reason that I was in the game. She reached out and asked me if I wanted to play, just out of the blue, and I did. So, yeah. uh, We've talked about it before, but Tolis <clears throat> was the game that yeah. basically brought a lot of us together, um, and it's one of the bonus content things you can actually access if you're a Patreon subscriber for Nerdsmith, but mm -hmm. one of our patrons. But the uh, Tolis game... They Kickstarted I think everything. We took, yeah, I think we talked for two hours for that. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, yeah, it was something crazy because there's just so much information. But absolutely, Tolis um, kickstarted Nerdsmith. Yeah, absolutely. Which is the second thing on our list because it's important to both of us. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, uh, it's why we're both still here. It's why we both still talk. It's we basically made a show, and I was invited on it for the excuse of hanging around and chatting. It's great. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, wanted I, Russell to stick around, so I dragged him onto Geek Thyself and tricked him with a Doctor yeah. Who episode. <laughs> yes, uh, after Countless Heroes, which was by and large a lot of the same group as Tolus, mm -hmm. but with more people yeah. and more amazing people. Uh, and over those two games, I feel myself uh, become a better player. I was not always amazing in Tolus, and I've recognised that and I've apologised. Uh, but it was my second game. I wasn't looking at D&D in the right way. Not entirely. I still enjoyed it, but I probably viewed it way too much as something you could win, mm. uh, which was not the point. Now I feel like I'm a better player, and I play for the people, and I play to have fun. And even when I accidentally disintegrate a player character, which actually <laughs> happened in my Land of Ravens game, which is a game not connected to Nersmith, but it's a game though we found because of the third topic we'll get to in a minute basically a couple of sessions ago i fired off a random disintegrate when we couldn't see and it hit a cleric and killed them the, oh god the cleric <laughs> the cleric. oh no yeah you can't bring yeah. that back oh, nope <laughs> that's awful it but. was a really good session and we really enjoyed the story and we all trust each other Mm -hmm. But I know That's that important. if I'd have done if I'd have done that a couple of years ago, I would have been so much more distraught. Uh, so I'm in a much better place now. <laughs> but Nerd Smith is a big part of that. Nerd Smith is a massive part of that because the people on it are great. The community that we've sort of curated right now is great. Still growing. Hope it still grows. We I mean, we can get a, a WonderCon, which is going to be so fun. Yes, I'm excited. Yeah. Um, and. Actually, it just occurred to me as we were talking about Nerdsmith, um, but one of the reasons I think for both of us, probably, that it feels like 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons has been out for so long is because for anyone who hasn't listened to the Tolis bonus content episode, the Tolis game was played for months and months, and we were playing almost every single day of the week. So we're talking... Yeah, I probably close to a thousand hours and i know for a fact that the countless heroes stream that we had on the nerdsmith twitch was even longer was over a thousand hours <laughs> yeah. we hit a thousand hours uh, <clears throat> like maybe two thirds of the way through this yeah, halfway yeah. to two thirds of the way through the season 
Yeah, um, I distinctly remember joining Tolus, and I got so invested so early. <laughs> uh, I remember being in almost every session, mm-hmm. and I loved it. I, I never I thought you could play D and yeah. I never thought you could play D and D like that. And I'd gone from maybe having one session every every month to having that, and I adored it. And the people were amazing as well, which made it even better. Yeah, um, for anyone who again hasn't watched these shows or doesn't know what we're talking about, the Tolis game that we played and Countless Heroes, which was on our Twitch stream on Nerdsmith. Both of those games were played in a West Marches style, where one day in real life equals one day in the game. So if you play every day of the week, you're actually playing out every day of the week in the game. And that's Uh, the way it's designed. Yeah, and the last two weeks of the in-game things were super rough. Yeah, I've got to mention it. I've got to. Every time it so comes intense, up, yeah. uh, basically Logan decided he wanted to kill all of our hearts by making us <laughs> all sacrifice one of each other in every session laid up to the end. Mm-hmm. And at that point, even the people who had already gone had joined the call and were just listening yeah. and waiting for the next person to, mm-hmm. to leave. Yes, we had uh, we had two separate chats going on the Discord. <laughs> we did. Um, yeah, one was the people that were still alive, and the other one Livies was... are better than deadies. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> we had Livies are better than deadies, and yeah. deadies are better than Livies, or something like yeah, that. Something like that, yeah. Were the two different um, chats we had going, and if you were dead, you could only post in the deadies are better chat, and if you were living still, you could only post in the living are better stuff. You, you, you couldn't see the deadies chat. Yeah. Because we were talking about spoilery things. That's true. Um, um, I, I remember my last words for Xander at that point, and they were, I cast Bless, and I remember killing everyone in the in the call. Oh. Um, ironically, uh, I've actually got a charm commission for Xander, and it needed a quote, so I'm like, well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so... Speaking of the other, uh, the other game that I'm in, the reason I'm in that other game is for the next thing on our list, which is Critical Role. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is a for, for anyone who's not a Dungeons and Dragons player, Critical mm-hmm. Role is a group of voice actors led by the dungeon master Matthew Mercer, who started doing a Twitch stream of their game on the Geek and Sundry Twitch. And it started with this decade, and it exploded and became this huge phenomena and has really, like, bolstered Dungeons & Dragons beyond where Absolutely. It, it really ever has been. Uh, really, there's nothing else like it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it. I remember starting to watch it when I was really deep in my depression. Um, before I really recognised how bad it was and was on medication for it. Uh, and I remember watching an episode a day. Literally, I was watching an episode a day, but it was what was keeping me getting through each day. Uh, there were times where I wondered what would have happened if I didn't have that kind of thing. Um, this was very slightly before it told us, I think. Yeah. For me. Um... Uh, it was certainly something that kept me sane. It kept me feeling things, and it also meant that I could go out and see people occasionally. Uh, so, it, in that regard, it meant a lot to me, uh, and it reignited a love of D and D. Like I said, I'd been playing a little bit, but I I kind of dwindled a little because of it. But it kept me interested in getting into it again. Because. Mm-hmm. That was all good. Uh, I suppose we can also talk about Twitch on that while we're talking about things that are on Twitch, like Nerdsmith and Crit Roll. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> uh, yeah, because yeah. Twitch uh, started in 2011. Yeah, very start of the decade. Uh, it's become a hub for a lot of entertainment creators uh, yeah. who are smaller, and it gives them a platform to do the things that they can do. Uh, yeah. Like live stream content for people who didn't want to use YouTube, it was it worked out really well for them. 
Yeah, well, and it kicked off because in 2011, there weren't really a lot of live stream no. type of options. Like YouTube were, had an option, but it was yeah. clunky and didn't really work. Yeah. yeah, they hadn't really developed it well yet. It's better now, but they hadn't developed yeah. it well yet at all. And so but the we, only reason they developed it better is because, because Twitch, Twitch became so yeah because yeah. Twitch became so popular. So yeah, but like Russ was saying, Twitch is this huge platform, and it allows people who are creative to have an outlet for that and potentially have an audience, depending on if they draw people in. Um, it also it for some people is how they make their living. There are people who have enough followers and get enough subscriptions and donations that they make all of their money on Through Twitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which great for them. Like if they can make a living entertaining people and people want to support it, great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Uh, I mean, yeah. that's how Critical Role became its own entity. <laughs> yeah, like that's it's true. no longer part of Geek and Sundry; it's its own company now. Uh, just going back to Critical just a little bit like uh, that's how I met my other group because uh, one of the artists that I followed because of seeing their art through Critical Role basically set up a discord for their for their sort of followers and their fans they don't really do much commission work anymore but at the time that they were they had a patron and I was subscribed to it and we had a movie night to begin with um and the movie night worked so badly because we had to use a third party torrent site because the site we were going to stream the movie from didn't work. So it became such a bad train wreck that the reward changed to be a one shot D and D game every month. And then that turned very quickly from being one shot into a continuous campaign. <laughs> uh so which even goes on past the the life of that that Patreon account now. Uh, we've been playing in that one for two years. We just had our two-year anniversary uh, this past December. So that basically critical role uh, and D and D specifically is the reason why I've got two of the best group of friends and people that I've ever had. And yes, I know I sound sappy right now, but that's absolutely the truth. Yeah. No, there's there's I, so much. I was not exactly super popular in high school and stuff. I had a couple of friends, don't get me wrong. Uh, especially when I was in college. But I have met people who I get on better with, who I, res who I resonate more with, uh, and who I'm happy to be around because there were people who I realise now that were perhaps slightly toxic to be around for me. Oh, that's a lot of emotion. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Uh, we have the world of editing, so if you don't want it left in, you can take it out. No, I, I'm very happy to have it in because <laughs> it's how I feel. But it's uh, those elements of the the decade mean the world to me, and I hope I carry those people with me far past it, super far past it. But I, I, I. Do you want to get emotional? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, in, in terms of Dungeons & Dragons, it's meant a lot to me as well. I, um, like, some of my friends that I started playing with when I was in college, I still play with occasionally. And through that, through gaming in general, but related to D&D &D especially, you know, I met Tessa and Logan, who are some of my best friends. Like, Tessa's my sister from another Mista. And, um, you know, through them, I met Angela and Andy, who are both amazing. I mean, Angela and I have discovered that basically we both married the same man just 3,000 miles away from each other <laughs> and, and not actually physically the same man. There's just so many similarities that we discover as the years go on that it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> yeah. Down to how they like to make their coffee. Ugh. It's crazy. Um, and, you know, just an amazing group of people. And now a business, Nerdsmith. It's amazing. And I've gotten to meet amazing people like Russ. Oh, I don't know about that. 
I'm allowed to think you're amazing even if you don't think you're amazing. Fine. That's how Fine. friendship works. Fine. <laughs> God. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, the Nerdsmith and, family, I'm very happy to have. And not just a business, but a community of great people who mm-hmm. feel safe and comfortable, which in the current climate of everything is something everyone I feel like needs which is amazing Uh, so we are now past the halfway point because of emotions (laughs) that's okay it's good it's 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 good emotions sappy first half and then we can go to our mid-roll and when we come back we can talk about some still fun things that happened in the last decade but slightly less emotional ones (laughs) yes I think that's a good plan. So we will see you all in a minute. Hey guys, welcome to the mid-roll after some sappiness, but it's fine. <laughs> we're, yep. we're all recovered, mm-hmm. mostly. We are. And indeed. now we're going to talk. We're going to talk about our sponsors, who we love, who probably both started in the twenties as well, or not twenties in the last decade. <laughs> in the twenty tens. You know, that's a good question. We should have looked that up. I'm we should do that now. I think that yes. All right. All right. And I'm that's an easy way for me to check for this is just go to their Twitter. Die hard. Dice. Because yeah, they their Twitter for Die Hard Dice was it created in 2015. So <laughs> so they at least definitely are this year or this decade. And what about World Animal? Yep, 2017. So both of our sponsors are from the last decade. <clears throat> okay. Yes. And they're both amazing. Uh, World Anvil. It's worldanvil.com. It's a uh, campaign management and world building software website. And there's so many amazing features. You can basically create a wiki of your world, whether it's for your players or for your readers, if you're an author. Either way, it's amazing. Um, They won an Any in 2019 for being such an amazing campaign management tool. And um, again, that's worldanvil.com. We definitely recommend you check them out. They're amazing, and they're amazing people. Yes, speaking of other amazing people, we have to have dice. They are amazing people. They have amazing dice. They have amazing searches. They create all their dice in-house, or at least they create the molds and they create the colors uh, for their, especially their metal dice, which is they're probably more flagship product. Uh, basically, they own their, they create their own mold for them, uh, which is why you can't find their kind of designs anywhere else. Like they're very striking, they stand out, they're gorgeous, they're easy to read as well, which is so important in dice because mm-hmm. I've had dice that like the colors just been like badly picked. Like for the for the inking, it's like I can't read this. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that before too. That's always a problem. Yeah, not a problem with their metal dice though, because the the numbers are always in the same sort of steel steel either gold or silver with the colours around them. They stand out. They're striking. They're beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have their squad of rolling as well. They've got great accessories. You can search by anything that you're really interested, like its character class or colour or material or anything like that. They've also got amazing accessories like their dice bags or their squad of rolling, which is a dice bag and a rolling mat all together in one. (laughs) I love it. I will continue to talk about it. They're amazing. If you do go to their site and you find something you like, you can use the code geek thyself to get 15% off your first order. That's uh, first or next order. Sorry. That's uh, one five 15. Uh, And yeah, if you want to roll with the best, you can just go to dieharddice.com. All right, and with all that, and with less emotions, we'll now get back into the second half-ish part of the episode. <laughs> yeah, the se- second half, <laughs> aka the last few minutes. <laughs> yes, no worries. Right. See you in a minute. Oh, I said that last time. See you right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so with the last few minutes of this episode, which is probably going to spiral mm-hmm. into more than a few minutes because we like tangents. Um, we do, but it's fine. We're going to hit on a few more things that yes. dominated this last decade, at least for us, in terms of things that we think are important. Um, Funnily enough, they're all very nerdy things. It's amazing. You, who'd have thunk? 
Um, Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> so two that stand out very largely for us, as well as for a lot of people who identify as nerds or geeks or whatever, uh, are the Star Wars movies, because the new Star Wars series with Rey and Kylo Ren and everything started. And it didn't unfinished. F- well, it didn't technically, did it finish? Oh, yeah, no, I guess because it came yeah, out around yeah, Christmas. Yeah. yeah, so it's started and finished within the last decade. Yes, between 2015 and 2019, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, neither of us have actually seen the last one yet because, I mean, if we couldn't get together to record, we didn't really have time to go and see a movie either. <laughs> yeah, because let's be clear. The two of us sitting down to record takes approximately half an hour to 45 minutes assuming we stay on task. Um, A movie is significantly longer than that. Plus, sometimes he and I are recording in what is the middle of the night for one of us. (laughs) I like right now. (laughs) Yeah. It's like nearly 1 a.m. for you now. Uh So, you know, getting to actually go watch a two-plus-hour movie takes a little more coordinating. (sighs) Yeah, we're going to go and do it, uh, and then we'll talk about it. At some point, <laughs> honestly, but we'll get. By the time this episode actually comes out, we might have seen. Oh, we might have done. That's fair. Yeah. We might have done. But currently, as of, the, as of the day we are recording this, neither of us has seen it. <laughs> no holidays. It's a travesty. <laughs> yeah, this is a travesty because um, I have loved Star Wars all of my life. Yes, I. We are going to see it, but we just haven't yet. And then yes, absolutely. The other series of movies that came out that had a huge impact on the last ten years. Are, for everyone. Yeah, for so many people are the Marvel yeah. superhero movies. The the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes, two of them technically came out before 2010, but mm-hmm. only two of them. Yes, only two of their 23 movies came out before that. <laughs> yes, and one of the movies was The Incredible Hulk. Which we don't really talk about, which is fine. Iron Man was really good. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> The Incredible Hulk was, yeah, it's, it wasn't bad, but Mark Ruffalo is definitely better, at least to me. Yeah, Mark Ruffalo is, yeah. was an amazing Hulk. So, you know, that yeah. first one we could, yeah. Eh. But, yeah, but <laughs> really the first big landstone event for them was Avengers in 2012. Mm-hmm. That is when I think people outside of the, the comic book realm really started to take notice because they produced a lead up to a film which you could watch your favorite heroes team up and it didn't feel rushed yeah like, they they actually like, built up to it you got to establish the previous characters and then they put them all together and it worked yeah yeah it worked because it, there was a there was a there was a lead up yeah. like you couldn't have just done that out of the blue so like you needed squad. to make people <coughs> Or Justice League, but that's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, it's difficult to do without any lead up because, uh-huh. th- like, by the time we got into that point, we cared about Iron Man, we cared about Captain America, yeah, we cared about Thor. We we even cared about the Hulk to to some degree, and we also cared about Hawkeye and Black Widow, even if they didn't have their own movies. But we did care about them. Yes, like. So by the time we got there, it was it was good, and then mm-hmm. after phase one, it got even weirder, like with going out into space with the guardians, which I don't think anyone expected to be as good as it did as it was, like, like I was hopeful because the actors they were using, I like all of those actors and actresses. That's, they, that I meant from a story perspective of oh, who is or what are these characters? Who ah. I'd never heard of the guardians. Had you? I hadn't heard of the guardians i that wasn't a comic series i read but yeah. i was interested and i like i said i liked those yes. actors and actresses and from the clips so, i so saw I. I was hopeful that it was going to be yes. good it blew it yeah. my expectations out of the water yes, definitely gonna say that a, yeah but for a, a franchise of characters you'd never heard of to be that successful kind of just proves mm-hmm. how much stop and power marvel's had over the past decade like carrying on into Spider Man, we got a really good Spider Man movie yeah. or two last decade. Spider Man Homecoming is so good, I loved it so much. 
Uh, and I'm a big Spider-Man fan. Um, I've got a Marvel Spider-Man like above me. I, I love him <laughs> so much. But they made such a good story of films. And now that it's over, I'm cautiously optimistic to see what they can do. But they have reached a high that I don't think can be done again. Yeah. Well, and it. the other thing is, too, what they did that was so good, I think, is they yeah. found the right actors for those individual roles first. Like, they found the perfect Iron Man with Robert Downey Jr. They found the perfect Captain America with Chris Evans. The perfect mm-hmm. Thor. And the perfect with, Thor with, with Chris, Chris Hemsworth, Hemsworth, yeah. Like, they found the right people to play those roles. Mark yeah. Ruffalo, Mark who Ruffalo. came in as the mm-hmm. Hulk. They were the right yeah. people to play those Tom roles. Tom Holland. Yes, Tom Spider-Man. Holland as Spider-Man when he came in, too. Yeah. They kept finding the right people. And yeah. then, Tom Hiddleston. On top Loki. of that, they got those yeah. right people to mesh together very, they very did. well. They did. There was good chemistry. Like, yes. Like even like because even if you do have great actors, sometimes they don't work together. Right. Sometimes like, the chemistry you can just tell it's off. Yeah, but I never had that problem throughout any of no. them. It's like uh, what like Avengers of Ultron, not my favorite of the films, but the the party scene with them all, where they're mm-hmm. trying to pick up Thor's hammer, is one yes. of the best scenes ever. Yes. Uh, it, it's <laughs> so good. good. Yeah, but they they they're, they're friends. You yeah. can see it in everybody. It's it's so good. Um, so yeah, the whole the whole of the first three phases and that coming to a close was this decades thing. I don't know if phase four and onwards are going to be as good or at least as impactful to the people. I don't I don't know if it's possible. We'll but find we'll out. We'll have to see, I guess, because now we've. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler, 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 spoilers. Uh, <laughs> we've now not got Iron Man. We've now not got Captain America. For whatever reasons we have them, we, we don't have them. Just in case people haven't seen Endgame yet. I'm not going to say why. <laughs> but we don't have them. And those two were from phase one. And Iron Man was literally the first. Yeah. So... I don't know how it will carry on. I hope it still is good. I have faith. I'm, we'll have to see. Yeah, I'm optimistic that even if it mm-hmm. doesn't reach quite the same pinnacle, that it's at least yeah. going to continue to be decent movies because they, you know, they still have some of the ones they've started to establish, like Spider-Man is around. Although the, there's the whole, like, Disney versus Sony thing, but if, if they get it worked out, we've still got a good Spider-Man. Yeah, and then on hopefully. top of that, there's um, Black Panther. Yep, uh, we've got we still got uh, Hulk as well, which is good. We still got Thor. We still yes. got the Guardians. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've we've got we've got enough people to stick around with. I'm not saying I'm worried for the future of it. I'm just saying. To some people, it won't ever get to that height again, I don't think. I would agree. I, I, regardless of if of who they bring in as the other as new superhero characters and how they play it, the fact remains that for a lot of people, especially anyone who... Because it's a 10-year span. People grew up yeah. watching these characters. I so literally did. For anyone who falls into that category, it's going to be very, very hard to follow with new characters and new actors and actresses and draw uh, yeah. people in just as strongly. Well, for for context, in 2008 when Iron Man came out, I was in my early teens. Mm-hmm. So I literally did grow up with the movies. Yeah. Uh, the same way I grew up from my younger self to my formative self with Harry Potter. Like, they basically overlapped each other, and then mm-hmm. that was my teenage sort of growing up. Um, we've only got a couple more things, because, cause, you know, we're, we're terrible, and we can't stick to a plan. But it's fine. <laughs> uh, the very first thing, for this is more for my side specifically. I know that Heather is also a fan. Yes. But... Like, we've already mentioned it once this episode, how I was suckered into doing it myself, <laughs> is Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. 
And we know that Doctor Who didn't start uh, in this decade. It didn't no. start. Many, depending many, on many, your... many decades ago, technically. <laughs> yeah. Or at least 2005, if that's how you want to do it. But the first day of 20, 2010, Matt Smith became the new Doctor, the 11th Doctor. And I've said it before in a few episodes that the 11th Doctor, Matt Smith, became my favourite Doctor pretty much immediately. Because the eleventh hour was such a good episode. It really was. It was. Pr- it's the best f- opener for a Doctor ever, ever. At, at least from the new series. So. Yeah, I do. I do really like the opening they did for um, the next thing that's on our list, which is the first it is. female Doctor Who. Yes, which came about in twenty eighteen. I want to say. Yeah, I think so. 2017? 20, around there. Around there. Uh, but yeah. yeah, so... Yeah. Her opener was good also, but I, I have to agree with you. I think 11th yeah. Hour is better. I really enjoyed her opener. Yes. Really enjoyed it. Uh, I also really enjoyed the second episode where we saw the new TARDIS. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed both of those. And honestly, I really enjoyed the third episode, Rosa. Like, they had a really good three first episodes... For, for that, that I agree. I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, I don't think she's she's outstripped uh, Matt Smith for me personally, but she's doing great, and I'm loving the the new series as well. It's all good. Uh, I can't wait to see where it goes. But yeah, I just had to mention it from myself that from the from from the twenty tens, Matt Smith, my favorite Doctor, became the Doctor. And was around until the end of 2013. So. Oof. Yeah. And for and me, we... as a female mm-hmm. fan of Doctor Who, I, uh, absolutely. I have to say that getting to finally see a female Doctor, not that I haven't loved the male Doctors, but I'll be honest, I haven't watched the old series, which we've talked about before. But the, with the new series, um, like I've liked all the Doctors. Some more than others, but I've liked them all. I haven't had an issue with any of them. But getting to finally see a female Doctor, especially when there's so many episodes where things get dropped and teased that he's had female iterations before, or that, you know, that other Time Lords have come back as a different gender and stuff like that. Like, especially having all of that teased and never actually getting to see it, it's amazing to finally have a female Doctor. Especially with Missy. Yes. With uh, the 12th Doctor. I think at that point they were really gearing up for it because at that point you've made one of the biggest uh, enemies of the Doctor female. It's like, well, now you've kind of got to at least some point. Uh, so, but yeah, they did. And I'm loving Jodie Whittaker's run. It's great. Yes. I wish there was more of it. I wish there was a series last year, but, you know. Uh, that's not her fault, that's the BBC's. Uh, but we also have talked about how I'm collecting the Blu-ray releases of the the seasons of The Old Doctor Who. So, yeah, I'm really enjoying that. Which uh, which is why I am... Which is why Doctor Who is more my thing than yours, but that doesn't make me more of a fan, it just means I'm watching the old stuff. I would be okay with you arguing that you're more of a fan. No, or... I don't like th- I don't <laughs> I don't like that mentality in fandom. That, I don't like fair. saying that oh, I'm a big bigger fan. So, no. Nah. I I like the idea of oh, you're a fan, great, you're a fan. How about more knowledgeable fan? Okay, I'll, I'll I'll give you that, but I, I don't, don't think anyone I don't... would argue that that's not a true statement. <laughs> Potentially. But I, I don't like the idea of being labelled as more of a fan because I feel like that's a very toxic way of looking at things. It's like, that is oh, true. I've been there first. No, I don't, I don't like that. Uh, I, I happily welcome any fan into the Doctor Who fandom, whether you're just watching one Doctor or you're jumping straight into the classic Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. You, you've got my support. Doesn't matter. I would agree wholeheartedly, mm-hmm. but I I will yeah. I will say then instead that you are a more knowledgeable Doctor Who. I, I fine. I can't necessarily disagree with that without making does myself it, hurt. Doesn't make you a better or more fan. It just you yes. know more about it than I do. That is an accurate statement. 
Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note of loving everyone and their fandoms, mm-hmm. uh, tell us about what your fandoms were from the last decade. We're sure we've not covered all of them because uh, we, we don't know them. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah. Yeah, so feel free to let us know in the Discord, on Twitter. You know all of that. Geek underscore yourself, the nerds for Discord. Feel free to chat with us about your favourite fandoms, about what you what you've really loved about the last decade, whether it's video games or anything like that. We want to know, uh, and yeah, we hope that this next decade is full of other things we can be fans about. Mm-hmm. Like, I wonder when D- I wonder when D and D Sixth Edition is going to come out. Blasphemy. <laughs> I mean, it's. I like Fifth I mean, Edition a lot. I, I, like I honestly can't, as well. like, just in all the years I've been playing, at the moment, I yeah. can't think of anything that they could add that would Yeah, make I don't think they need better. a new edition. No. I, what they need like to they do is come out with add, more supplements for it. Yes, maybe more classes. That'd be fun. Yeah. Well, because, like, with 3.5, which is the one I started playing back in college, they... Oh, God, I can't even tell you how many supplemental books. Like... Mm. my friends that have all of our books that we compiled together um, that we still go play with sometimes there's probably like close to 30 Yikes, D&D, that's a lot of books. D&D books that we all purchased between all of us and there's not yeah. that many repeats like we've got more than one Dungeon Master's Guide and we've got more than one PHB but, but yeah like it's the not, other supplements yeah the other supplements like they're all Unique. supplements and different Jeez. settings and things like that I mean to be fair they are starting to bring more and more out now yes that's like, true. there has been a there has been an uptick especially since d d beyond came out which mm-hmm. I guess is also a thing from the 2010s yeah technically that's true. Uh, which is making it more accessible for people which is always good uh, yeah uh, I whether they need a sixth edition I don't know I, I don't know whether they'd actually make a sixth edition with d beyond now I'm not sure. Then maybe they'll just keep on the fifth, fifth edition. I guess we'll find out. Maybe this decade. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, but with all that being said, we've rambled for far too long. We've gone on <laughs> way too many tangents. We've had way too many emotions. But we love you all. Enjoy what you like. Don't t- don't let people tell you otherwise. Yes. And we'll see you soon. Yep. We'll Bye, talk guys. to you guys next week. Bye. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Geek Thyself. Don't forget to check out all the other amazing content on the Nerdsmith Network. If you have any questions for either of us, you can get in contact with us on Twitter at geek underscore thyself. You can also email us at geekthyself at nerdsmith.org. And please don't forget to go to iTunes and leave us a review or also go anywhere you listen to your podcasts. We'll be back next week with another informative and fun episode. And until then, don't forget to geek thyself.